Hey, hey, folks, here we are again. This is your man, Adolphus A.D. Moore, with a special edition of the corner. Pop the music down real quick. Pop the music down real quick with a special edition of the uh, corner. You know, in the annals of the, when you talk about the Houston Oilers, that, that last name, all you have to do is say Campbell, and it's synonymous with, with, a, with a trendsetter and a groundbreaker. But and everybody immediately thinks about the Tyler Rose, but there was another Campbell on the uh, Houston Oilers team that was also a groundbreaker and a trendsetter, and uh, gentleman out of Mount Pleasant, Florida. He was a wound up in tenth uh, round draft pick, 1967, out of Northwestern, and uh, this young man by the name of uh, Woodrow Lamar Campbell, better known as Woody Campbell, and as I bring Woody in. I would like to, Woody, uh, welcome to the corner, and uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Just want to just sit here and, and reminisce a little bit. I appreciate you coming on. Well, you know what? Well, I, I was hey Woody when I was doing my, I was doing my research and I sit down one like, uh huh. <laughs> I said that'll probably be the first and the last time I get away with it. Other than, you know. those are fighting words. <laughs> primarily, I tell you what. Primarily, what we got, you, what I wanted wanted you in for, and you and I, you know, we've had had these conversations in the past but what i wanted to talk about was your groundbreaking career you were the first black american to broadcast television black television sports in the houston market and what i want to do is just talk about that whole experience and what it meant to you and how and you know just to, just from the genesis what happened we, we know you had five years in with the houston Oilers. And not only that, that, you know, you uh, have been a prolific author, too, with a couple of books that we'll talk about toward the end. But I want to talk about how did that come about? And what year was it? And what was the station? And how did it come about? Right. Hmm. 
when when they when they I know you that you mentioned that you had done some spots over there, but when they had uh, when they finally approached you, what was your mindset? I mean, you mentioned Irv Cross, you know who 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 was a trailblazer. Uh, but what was your mindset? Who who did you have to go? Who did you sit down and meet? Because you know we all when things are major issues like who did you go talk to and just sort of just bounce that idea off? You know, besides your wife or somebody else, because you've been that that history maker. I mean, it, at that time when you're the first get first one, it's kind of hard to look around and go like, well, who did I go talk to? You, you, I know we want to get into this, but what well, one of the things I want, I and mean, you and I have talked in the past, but this is something that I think need to get out. Folks start calling the station once you start appearing. What, what happened? Just I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm sort of stand back and I'm, I'm gonna let the, we're gonna call this what uh, chapter one, chapter two. Let's talk about some of the comments that once you start appearing on channel two. What? What were some of the comments and things that, that came about, plus and minus? Excuse me? Wait a minute. Hold up. Back up. You are a graduate of Northwestern University. Where did I learn, where did I learn my speech? Yeah.
did, did, did folks think that somebody was dubbing your voice or did <laughs> I mean did they think you, you they, somebody was behind you dubbing your voice or, or, or standing there I mean you know, when you first told when, when you and we had talked several several years back and you told me that I just sort of I looked at you like what I mean it, it, it's it's almost like that you were sort of like a prop that was set up there and somebody else was doing everything and they just set you there and and you were just like they flipped the switch and you were just automatic, huh? Well, I will say it was a lot of history that turned to the word God because uh, the, my predecessors, the guys that they had tried to do that with, um, it obviously were all white, white or black. Um, they were not very effective. show up about uh, 3 o'clock, search the wires, decide on what I was going to uh, work on, take a look at what uh, the networks had sent down as far as the assets were concerned, the things, the list activity, select what I was going to add, and uh, I think I had the opportunity whatever commentary I wanted to create about it. But it wasn't rocket science. So that evidently at the time was a lot of thought that whatever it was going to be, I would be out of my uh, capacity to actually put the work in that book. Back then, I mean, back then, what we, we were talking, what, about a what a three a three minute what the three minute sections was it by what three to five minute sports sections back then? Three to five minutes was the close to five minutes, yeah. That so, I did on weekends and on the weekend. So you had to, you know, so you was doing the tape with the tape editing, the voiceover, all of that was, was all under your purview, huh? Yeah, I would I would pull my materials from whatever the network feed was, do the voiceover where I needed to. Now, at that time, KPRC Channel 2 was owned by the Hobby family, along with the Houston Post. Did at, did, did at any point, did, did, did you ever hear from them, did, was any, by world, did you ever hear in the back channel about, about how they felt when, you, when they brought you on? Did you get any feedback by, by virtue of any of the hobbies as what they might have said to you? Right. And, uh, and after about a year and a half there, then they brought on uh, Bill Warrell out of uh, University of Houston. Correct. Did you, during the course of your time at Channel 2, and I, we, met, we already mentioned the late Irv Cross, did any of the, the, did the, uh, 
NBC national folks reach out to you to get you to do some stand up or anything? Was that how 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 much how much farther did it go beyond say what you've done at the local channel two affiliate? Did any of the national folks reach out to you for anything? <laughs> yeah you know it's it's kind of ironic how you describe your tenure then and if you look at the national number one team for the nfl broadcasting season coming up you would uh, swear that uh, you were exception to the rule <laughs> <laughs>
So you wound up having to report that your coach was being fired. You you broke the news about your coach, huh? Yes, I did. And uh, they had a lot of satisfaction because if there was ever a person who did not belong on the NFL as a coach, uh, it was that coach. Because it was awesome. Tell us, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> You, you you mentioned the fact that uh you know like like I said you from Mount Pleasant, Florida. You know, he was at Florida State. At that time, you weren't you couldn't go to Florida. You could go to you go you could go to Bethune Cookman, you can go to FAMU, uh Florida Florida A and M. But you weren't there was no University of Florida Gators, there was no University of Miami, none of those schools were op open to you at that point in time. And you wound up all the way at Northwestern. So Right. Well, yeah, so I made the long trek to uh, Northwestern University because the schools in the other part of the country, uh, the South was starving, as you know, the North was ill in this case. And uh, that was my reason, my reason for going up north to my Northwestern recruiting camp. Because realistically, the Big Ten was was a, had a welcome mat out for you. The Pac Ten, or was it? It wasn't the Pac. Yeah, it would be the well, uh, uh, the Big Ten, uh, the Pac was it Pac Ten or Pac Eight at that time? They might they had they the Big Eight. How did let, let me just just quickly just sort of how did your parents deal with you going all the way to Northwest and having to leave Florida? How did they deal with that challenge you having to leave and go all the way to Northwest? They, they left it up to me. Okay. The the leg the legendary Jay Gaither, right?
last time we had a tornado. And at the time, I, I wasn't thinking about the groundbreaking being pioneered because at that time, we were born. I mean, there were no other uh, players in the world of basketball. Right. Okay. Uh, John Merritt, would that that'd be John Merritt at that time? Okay. Yep. You know, as we about get ready, like I say, I, I appreciate you taking the time. I, uh, you know, let's talk. I want to quickly just touch on the fact that I know you're good at, you have been prolific as far as having commentary because you, you are you, you speak your mind and you've always ever since I've known you, you've been very frank about putting out, you know, you did they, let's put it like this. They say that's Woody Campbell. Woody Campbell's what you see is what you get. But who who are some of the folks that you know that sort of molded that that commentary that biting with of yours in your commentary? Is that, how much how much is that Woody Campbell? How much is that of somebody else than than might have asked them in, in, when you start? When you when you pull out the scalpel and start going after folks. You you know in in my doing my research and and you you know you know I was gonna do some do some I didn't you got a couple of books that the author to your credit Woody uh one of them and and this is a, another unique situation a book titled I O U a candid look at the plight of the American veteran and you were one of only seven professional athletes to serve active duty in Vietnam. You wrote that book. Yes, uh, you have done that research for me. <laughs> yes, I was. I was one of only seven uh, reserve soldiers who played uh, who served on active duty in the military in World War II, uh, including uh, myself. Okay. Uh, who was a tank commander uh, in Vietnam? So uh, Bob Gallus, who you all may have mentioned, who had played twelve years in World War II, World War II II, uh, and uh, I cannot remember the remainder of the list, but uh, that was the group in which I was involved. You also had a book called Fade to Black. Uh, what's a quick? What was a quick synopsis on that? Now, I mean, like I said, I've got to go dig them, but I'm 
I'm going, I'm going like, wait a minute. Woody walks around just so nonchalant, you know, like I say, but hey, hey, you, you know, you're, you're a treasure troll. And what, what, what was the emphasis for Fade to Black? So 
Well, <clears throat> sir, I tell you what, uh, I, I knew this was going to be an interesting moment with you. <laughs> I've been I'm knowing you, and it's been it's been my pleasure to have known you all these years. But the thing about it, and you know, and like I say, you don't blow your horn. And but the thing about it, I felt like that your story needed to be out there. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it's out there, but you know, the thing about it. I'm not waiting for somebody else to tell a story. And we, you know, we mentioned his opportunity with the technology and everything. Tell the story myself and get the person himself to sit there, sit down, and just have a conversation. And that's basically what we've had. And it's what we've had all the other years. It's, like I said, it's always been a, a pleasure. And as I stated, you've been a consummate gentleman and uh, a wealth of knowledge. And you've always been able to you know, you didn't you mind didn't mind sharing your knowledge and trying to help other folks along the way. And so I um I appreciate you. I thank you for your time of sitting down with the corner, come on the corner and just hey, just talk about your life and where does this where did this guy from Mount Pleasant, Florida uh, <laughs> where does he where did he fit in at in this whole this whole mosaic what we call America here and to, I salute you, sir. And I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on and accepting my invitation and coming on and just talk, letting you talk, let you talk about your career and particularly from the television standpoint, because, you know, a lot of folks think Stephen A. Smith might be the genesis of everything, but it, go, it goes back a little bit further. And, and that's not a shot. That's not a shot at Stephen A. By no stretch of the imagination. Yeah, the late the Dallas Cowboys, Don Perk. Correct. Yes, it was, Mr. Campbell, and I I say that respectfully. I know I know you get on me when I when I do that that time, but I say that really out of total respect and admiration, and uh, I appreciate you because, like I told you at the time when when I looked up and saw somebody that looked like me actually doing sports on TV locally, and I told you then it, it had an impact. Then it's just like I, uh, you know, watched um, uh, 
Mal Good, when he was a national at ABC, he was a he was the uh, UN correspondent, and I got a chance to meet him, 1974 in in, uh, in California, at a convention. So those things, you know, you, you don't you don't forget things like that, and you know, like I say, whatever whatever success I have, I, I you know, we standing on your guys' shoulders because somebody had to be number one, and. Uh, you know, and like, and like you, like I, I know I killed you one day about fumbling the ball, but you, one thing about it, you never fumble that opportunity. And, and it, it was a pleasure for us to, to be able to stand on your shoulders and to be able to, whatever little success that we might have in this broadcast industry, you know, a tip of the hat to you, sir. Hey. Well, what a, hey, have a have a good night. Uh, I, I I know you probably I know you I'm, you and I you've already told me what your impressions of NBA basketball. So I'm not, I'm gonna I'm I'm end this on a, I'm gonna end this on a high note. I don't want <laughs> I'm gonna end it on a high note. And uh, you know, I appreciate you for the time and the family and everybody. Good night. I hope Godspeed. That you know, I know you're having some issues with the. With the with your family and their health issues, but I and I'm praying pray that everything continue to prosper and move forward. And uh, again, I appreciate it and thank you, him. My pleasure, Miss Liz doing much better. Uh, on her way to recovery. I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys and all that you do. And thank you for all of those comments and rock comments. So you take care. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, man. And folks, as we wrap this up, that uh, I hope that uh, the the that everything that we've been able to shed some light on uh, historical significance here in Houston, Texas. Uh, I, I've been knowing Woody Campbell a, a lot of years. And the opportunity when we can be able to sit down up in the uh, press box when the Texans are playing, he's one of the Texans legend. And he has been a wealth of information, a wealth of encouragement. And I, uh, again, I appreciate it. So as we close this night out, as y'all get ready to go for the, getting ready for the NBA playoffs and so forth. Hey, don't forget COVID is still out there. If you have not had your shots, go get your shots. You know, be careful, be safe, be kind. Uh, Prayers, you know, my prayers to the parents down there in Uvalde, my prayers to the folks up in Buffalo, New York. And, you know, let's stop the insanity, people. You know, let's have some common sense about we are who we are and what we are. You know, and you know, everything is not mental illness neither. That that needs to be some some justice to where we are and how we live as human beings. So without further ado, this is Adolphus A.D. Moore signing off until the, later on. We'll probably have another special cast coming up before we get to the regular season. But what I do, ciao, deuces, and I'm out. <laughs>